Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology, and uh, I am delighted today to have Arjun Sar with us. Dr. Arjun Faiji is here finally, and today he is going to enlighten us on how to deal with our karmas, how to know them using nakshatras, and we were having an amazing discussion on karmas. You know, he will explain it. So this is the first time you are here, and welcome to Exotic Astrology, sir. And the stage is all yours. Please enlighten us. Yeah, thank you and uh, namaste to everybody. Thank you, Babajit, for inviting me. It's been a long, I think, uh, for a couple of months, I think we have been going back and forth and it's, it's never happened. But I think finally we said we're going to do it today. So, but thanks for the patience and also, you know, thanks for inviting me. You know, this is a <clears throat> absolutely a delightful thing to be talking on exotic astrology because we couldn't talk today about... Um, one of my favorite topics, uh, I've not discussed this much, but uh, this is a very basic topic and this is based on um, karmas. How to look at your karmas and how to look at nakshatras and how to link at your karmas and to see how your life pattern unfolds. And many people miss the basics of this and if you do not understand the basics then you won't even know why you're doing certain remedies, upai, toad case. There are different names you call them. Okay. So basically, what is a remedy? You know, remedy is only we say it's remediation. Remediation. So something we are mediating. <clears throat> but before we mediate, we have to understand why are we mediating something. Okay. So Firstly, I want to start with the basics of astrology and Nadi astrology. After that, I will go into nakshatras. Because unless people understand the simple basics, I don't think they will be able to appreciate why are we doing certain things and why, you know, an astrologer is recommending them to do, um, you know, a certain remedy or, you know, they're trying to, they say, oh, this is a malefic, so do something for this, like a mantra, a puja, or a fire, fire sacrifice, or fire ritual, or uh, maybe, you know, saying, oh, give donations. <clears throat> but before we go there, you know, first of all, we have to understand um, the principle of how the chart works as per Nadi. And in Nadi, one thing you have to understand, this is not about Nadi, but I'm giving you the basics from Nadi and then we'll come into Nakshatras. In Nadi, the most important houses are the ninth, the first, and the fifth house. Now, it is called the trine houses. The trine houses are the most important. Why? It is like the ninth house is your past. Ninth house is your ancestors. Ninth house is your father. Ninth house is your dharma. Ninth house is your family deity. Ninth house is also uh, your guru. So ninth house is a lot to do with whatever is there in the past. Your father is your past. Your ancestors are your past. But what people have not understood is in Nadi, one, nine, one and five are nothing but they are a part of the whole. Nine, one and fifth house are part of the whole. Now what is part of the whole? What is the whole then? Whole is nine, one, five is the whole. And ninth house is the part, which means <clears throat> ninth house is nothing but you are saying your past. First house is your present. And fifth house is your future. That is why ninth house is seen for your bhagya or fortunes. What are you bringing from your past? What is the present? It's the lagna, ascendant. Okay. There is a difference between ascendant and lagna. Do you know what is the difference between Ascendant and Lajna? 
that is why in astro in jyotisha we say lagna we don't say ascendant the, the concept is the same but there is a slight difference lagna means union lagan okay iska lagan ho gaya matlab there is a marriage which is happening the what is a marriage happening between a marriage is happening between the soul the body and the mind so when the soul has entered and the the mind is attached to that soul based on the samskaras or it is the past person is the hard disk drive basically so it is a hard disk drive which is the moon which is a chip which has been inserted and that is when you know we say you know this is the so fifth house is the future that's why we see children we see purva punya why we see purva punya from the fifth house it is the fortune or the bhagya of the ninth house ninth from ninth fifth house so essentially what i want to say is they are inseparable they are only time and space differentiated as in ninth house is also you in in a different form first house is also you fifth is also house also you they are all the amsha amsha means they are an essence did you understand what i'm trying to so fifth house is the ninth from ninth that is why it's purva punya okay <clears throat> so if ninth house is the past then you have to come to another concept i will come to another concept of understanding what is fourth house what is fourth house as you know in jyotisha what is the common thing that you say with the fourth house what is fourth house associated with baba ji property home mother happiness peace settlement absolutely. also to some extent absolutely resting place as we were discussing <laughs> fourth house is the womb of your mother where you have been the most comfortable the most secure it's the emotional bond that you are creating with the fourth house fourth house is cancer it's about nourishment you have been nourished by your mother through the umbilical cord which is connected to your navel that is where from you know vishnu from vishnu's navel brahma came out through the lotus so your creation itself starts with your navel so fourth house is the womb of your mother and fourth house is also your tomb the final resting place fourth house that's why it shows you happiness you says you said happiness house before you are born the womb was your house after your death the tomb is your house and these are the only two places where you are the most secure and the most happiest and whatever comes in between this is called life okay sukha bhava happens but what is fourth house you have to understand fourth house from any house shows the happiness of that house concerned from any house but fourth house is also called as the agami karma what is agami means agami means what i want to do my thoughts tomorrow i want to go and pay my bills that's a thought it's my plan so this karma is your thought process so what are the thoughts is a reservoir it's a thought which is stored all your thoughts are stored in the fourth house so any house and the fourth from it is the reservoir the storage so if for whatever reason i don't accomplish something that i really i am keen on doing in this life then i have gathered that did you understand it is a 
manifested actions it was your thought processes which had to be converted into action but it was not done so what does it mean agami which means which is coming in future i want to do i want to go and pay my bills tomorrow i want to go to this place tomorrow it's agami so if i have to ask you which house will show you the thoughts which were unmanifested from a past life i told you what which house represents the past life yeah, so what is the un house. exactly 12th house comprises what was pending in your mind from a previous life so many astrologers will also make your 12th house as a lagna and read your chart the same chart your lagna you are changing to the 12th house the same chart with the same planetary combinations you will read the chart because it is showing what was there pending in your mind from your past so 12th house is very key and 12th lord is very key okay now what were the actions you had done but you had not completed maybe there were some actions you had started doing but you couldn't complete it in a previous life so which house will show you that was pending and that has come as a balance in this life for you the opposite the sixth house <laughs> it is the sixth house of your chart because it is the 10th house from your 9th house 10th house of kriyamani karmas kriyamani means the karmas are actions done in this birth or that was done in the past birth that was supposed to be done it was done but some of them might have not been finished so what will that come as in this life in your chart it will manifest as prarabdha karma an unfinished kriyamani kriyamani is 10th house your 10th house is all your action house action packed house so may we judiciously choose our actions because they are going to be a kriyamani now kriyamani is very easy to understand kriyamani means i feel thirsty i go drink my water i quench my thirst i feel hungry i go eat my food that's kriyamani that is you are doing it without your knowledge then certain things are kriyamani which is fixed karma there are unfixed karma drida karma adrida karma drida means fixed that has to happen adrida means may happen may not happen so sixth house is prarabdha so from any house the sixth house will show what is that you cannot avoid because it was pending from a past life so that becomes the second which is most important is sixth now sixth is very very key why because it's a dushthana you know as well as upachaya do you understand what i am saying so fourth house is what you are recognizing as security and practical utility that you want to put and 10 10 house is i said kriya money which those actions so when you step out of your door from the house which is your fourth house when you step out of the door you are going into the seventh house the external world we call the seventh house as the descendant isn't it descendant means something which is setting when something was rising in the eastern horizon something was setting some star was setting in the east western horizon so when you know star in the eastern horizon as ascendant which signifies you your personality your behavior the seventh house is a descendant setting place where the sun falls and 10th house is what we said kriyamani so 7th house is what 7th house is the complete complement whatever completes you first house is birth as i said 7th house is what completes you what completes birth in one way we can say it is end of life i don't want to use the word death specifically because 
for us in, in uh, our uh, hindu philosophy death means it's a beginning of a new life again because death is it's a life rebirth and death is always a ongoing thing so death is not to be seen as something which is the end because it's just the beginning of the something new to start so what do you complete so in india we say you know our wives are we call them ardhangani ardhangani our better half we say in english completes you your better half completes you your external environment completes you so is it clear because the one seven concept is the most important concept is the simplest concept because if one is the lock the other is the key if one is the key the other is the lock if one is the problem the other is the solution never forget this principle because all your problems and solutions are there in the same chart if sixth house is service sixth house shows twelfth house shows retreat when you when you do too much of service and you are working and you are tired then you go to a retreat or an ashram or meditation or sleep too much of service too much of work in the sixth house then you need rest twelfth house is rest sleep sixth house is ailments twelfth house is cure so six and seven is one seven axis sixth house is <clears throat> debts twelfth house is repayment of debts so if you are worried about your debts and your repayment look at your 12th lord strengthen your 12th lord because that is what the 12th lord is going to give you the repayment of your debts if you are ill then look at your 12th lord your 12th lord is what is taking care of your cure your medicine your medicine is 12th house that's why 12th house is seen for hospitalization also 6th house is accidents then 12th house is hospital so do you see it is Six thousand is your shudrikus, kama, krodha, loba, moha, madha, matsarya. Pride, lust, ego, you know, greed, all of these are your six enemies. So where is the cure for all of them? Twelfth house, meditation, sadhana, trying to be a person who is into self-realization. What is self-realization? Sixth is also about your awareness, making decisions through properly assessing the value and consideration. Twelfth house is sadhana, is for self-realization. Why you want to be self-realized? Self-realization is the only way you can remove your sanchit karma. That is the next karma I wanted to say. Sanchit. What is sanchit? All your accumulated karmas from various lifetimes. Your positive energy, your negative energy, all that which is stored from millions of lifetimes that you might have taken. And where is the suffering happening? The suffering is happening only in the physical and the gross body, which is the stula sharira. But before it manifests in the stula sharira, which is your physical body, the subtle and the astral body has to show you the indication. Because before it comes to the uh, uh, Karana Sharira, then to Linga Sharira, okay? Before it comes there, three months it is residing somewhere, before it manifests. So if I can go to that cloud, that database, what we call it as Akashic Records, I would be able to remove that file and delete that file. If I can't delete that file within three months, that will manifest in my physical form. So before it has manifested in my physical form, it is somewhere it has been activated by your actions, by your thoughts. You are activating it somewhere. And because you are activating it, it is happening. Now you might ask, you know, then that means everything is based on destiny, right? Yes, it is based on destiny, but you have to understand that, you know, there is also free will. Because your your moon, see, when you look at a zodiac, okay, there is, you know, all the even Rashis are moon, which rules them, odd Rashis, sun rules them. 
so sanchit karma is where the root cause of all our sufferings are and our pleasures also but it is like the cloud where it is there you say i am traveling so i can't carry my hard disk drive what do i do i put all my data into my cloud and then i can go and download it from the cloud anywhere right so these are your psychic impressions your intense emotions you know your life's minutest details are all saved there and we have to address that as part of this astrology is not only about learning about planets houses and stars but you have to understand the the whole concept of this sanchit karma stored amount because this is where the surprises come from because it's not that you are getting everything from sanchit but from the sanchit you are pushing it into your prarabdha prarabdha is destined that you cannot but that sanchit which is the seeds which are ripened so basically what it is you can think of it like a a field where the seeds are under the ground and the planets are like the farmers who are plowing the field so that the seeds will come up the seeds will come up there is conditions and the environment is okay then they will start showing the the fruits that means they will germinate and they will start giving the karmas so before they become the seeds and before the planets plow them and bring the seeds which are sitting there dormant bring them up if we can understand the principles we will be able to solve a lot of our problems so that is where the concept i was i was wanting to talk about today is you know if you can understand the fourth house seventh house tenth house first house fifth house ninth house sixth house twelfth house eighth house then you will be able to understand you know why <clears throat> because now when you talk about career people will look at the 10th house the shams everything right but you also have to look at your 7th house 7th house is very key why 6th house is also key but 7th house is key because it is 10th from 10th what karmas of your past that you have to do it in this life 10th from 10th is 7th house the kriya mani karmas of your past life okay so did you understand this because if you don't if you understand this then i can teach you the next level of going to nakshatras because let me share my screen and show you this is the basic principle of uh, you know astrology can you see my screen yes i can see that yeah there is a simple understanding of you know how the uh, you have aries you have leo and you have sagittarius 